Le fiamme della banda Fratelli. Ascolta con noi. Peter Pan! Hi kids, I'm Marta and I'm going to read you a story. The story of Peter Pan. In a quiet street in London lived the Darling family. There were father and mother Darling, Wendy, Michael and John as well as the children nursemaid, Nana, a Saint Bernard. At bedtime in the nursery, Wendy always told wonderful stories about Peter Pan and Neverland, a magical place with mermaids and fairies, and wicked pirates too. John and Michael liked best of all to play pirates. They had some fine slashing duels between Peter Pan and his archenemy, the pirate Captain Hook. Father Darling did not like this kind of play. He blamed it on Wendy's childish stories of Peter Pan. It is time for Wendy to grow up, decided Father Darling. This is your last night in the nursery, Wendy girl. All the children were much upset at that. Without Wendy, there would be no more stories of Peter Pan. That very evening, who should come to the nursery but Peter Pan and a fairy named Tinkerbell? It seemed Peter had been out looking for his lost shadow. When he overheard that Wendy was to be moved from the nursery, he hit upon a plan. I'll take you to Neverland with me to tell stories to my last boys, he decided, as Wendy saw his shadow back on. Wendy thought that was a lovely idea, if Michael and John could go too. So Peter Pan taught them all to fly, with happy thoughts, and faith and trust, and a sprinkling of Tinkerbell's pixie dust. Then out the nursery window they sailed, heading for Neverland while Nana parked frantically below. Back in Neverland, Captain Hook was grumbling about Peter Pan. You see, once, in a fair fight long ago, Peter Pan had cut off one of the pirate captain's heads, so that he had to wear a hook instead. Through the head to a crocodile who enjoyed the taste of hook so much that he had been lurking around ever since, hoping to nibble at the rest of him. Fortunately for the pirate, the crocodile had also swallowed clock. It went tick tock when he came near, which gave a warning to Captain Hook. Now, as Captain Hook grumbled about his young enemy, there was a call from the crow's nest. Peter Pan Hahoy! What? Where? shouted the Hook, turning his telescope around in the sky. Gloated. Pipe up the crew, man the guns, we'll get him this time at last. Oh, Peter, it's just as I dreamed it would be. Mermaid Lagoon and all, Wendy said. As a cannonball ripped through the cloud beneath their feet. Look out, cried Pan. Tinkerbell, take Wendy and the boys to the island. A 
I'll stay here and drive Hook's fire. Away flew Tinkerbell, as fast as she could go. In a naughty little heart, she hoped the children would fall behind and be lost. She was especially jealous of the Wendy girl, who seemed to have won Peter Pan's heart. Straight through the Neverland jungle, Tink flew, down into a clearing beside Hangman's tree. She landed on a tall stool, bounced to a shiny leaf and pop. A secret door opened for air in the knot of the old hollow tree. Tip! Down a slippery tunnel, Tink slipped. She landed at the bottom in an underground room, the secret house of Peter Pan. Tingling, she twinkled, trying to awaken the sleeping lost boys. At last, rather grumpily, they woke up and stretched it as they listened to Tinkerbell. What? Pa wants us to shoot down a terrible Wendy bird? Let us do it, they shouted and out they hurried. When Wendy and Michael and John appeared, flying wearily, the lost boys tried to pelt them with stones and sticks, especially the Wendy bird. Down tumbled Wendy, all of her happy thoughts destroyed. Without them, no one can fly. Hooray! We got the Wendy bird! The lost boy shouted. But then Peter Pan arrived. How angry he was when he discovered that the boys had tried to shoot down Wendy, even though he had caught her before she could be hurt. I brought her to be a mother to us all and to tell us stories, he said. Come on, Wendy, said Peter. I show you the mermaids. Boys, take Michael and John to hunt some Indians. So Peter and Wendy flew away and the boys marched off through the forest, planning to capture some Indians. There were wild animals all around, but the boys never thought to be afraid and not a creature harmed them as they went through the thick woods. First, we'll surround the Indians, John decided. Then, we'll take them by surprise. John's plan worked splendidly, but it was the Indians who used it. Disguised as moving trees, they quietly surrounded the boys and took them by surprise. Soon, bound with ropes, the royal boys marched away, led by the Indians to their village on the cliff. Don't worry, the Indians are our friends, the lost boy said, but the chief looked stark. Meanwhile, on the other side of the island, Wendy and Peter were visiting the mermaids in their peaceful mermaid lagoon. As they were chatting together, Peter suddenly said, Hush! A boat from the pirate ship was going by. In it were wicked Captain Hook and Smee, the pirate cook. At the stern, all bound with ropes, saw Princess Tiger Lily, daughter of the Indian chief. We'll make her talk, sneered Captain Hook. She'll tell us where Peter Pan lives, or we'll lead her tied to Slippery Scar Rock, where the tide will wash over her. But proud and loyal Tiger Lily 
would not say a single word. Peter and Wendy flew to Scar Rock. Peter, by imitating Hook's voice, tried to trick Smith into setting Tiger Lily free. That almost worked, but Hook discovered the trick and came after Peter with his sword. Then what a thrilling duel they had! All over the rocky cave, where Princess Tiger Lily sat with the type up to her chin. Peter won the duel and rescued Tiger Lily just in the nick of time. Then away he flew to the Indian village to see the princess safely home. And Wendy went along behind. When Peter and Wendy brought Tiger Lily home, the chief set the captives free. Then what a wonderful feast they had. All the boys did Indian dances and learned wild Indian chants. And Peter Pan was made a chief. Only Wendy had no fun at all, for she had to help squaws carry firewood. I've had enough on Neverland, she thought promptly. I'm ready to go home right now. While the Indian celebration was at its height, Smee, the pirate cook, captured Tinkerbell and took her back to the pirate ship. He presented Tink to Captain Hook. Ah, Miss Bell, said Hook sympathetically. I've heard how badly Peter Pan has treated you since that scheming girl Wendy came. How nice it would be if we could kidnap her and take her off to sea to scrub the decks and cook for the pirate crew. Tink tinkled happily at the thought. But alas, sighed Hook, we don't know where Pan's house is. So we cannot get rid of Wendy for you. Tink thought this over. You won't hurt Peter? She asked in solemn tinkling tones. Of course not, promised Hook. Then she marched to a map of Neverland and traced the path to Peter's hidden house. Thank you, my dear, said wicked Captain Hook, and he locked her up in a lantern cage and went off to capture Peter Pan. That night, when Wendy tucked the children into their beds in the underground house, she talked to them about home and mother. Soon they were all so homesick that they wanted to leave at once for home. Wendy invited all the lost boys to come and live with the darling family. Only Peter refused to go. He simply looked the other way as Wendy and the boys told him goodbye climbed the tunnel to Hangman's Tree. Up in the woods near Hangman's Tree waited Hook and his pirate band. As each boy came out, a hand was clapped over his mouth and he was quickly tied up with ropes. Last of all came Wendy. Zip, zip! She was bound up too and the crew marched off with a load of children. Back to their pirate ship. 
Blast it, muttered Hook. We still don't have Pan. So he and Smee left a wicked bomb, wrapped as a gift from Wendy, for poor Peter to find. Very soon they hoped Peter would open it and blow himself straight out of Neverland. On the pirate ship, Captain Hook demanded that Wendy and the boys become pirates. Never, Wendy cried. Then you shall be the first to walk the plank, my dear, said Hook. In the excitement, no one noticed that Tinkerbell escaped and flew off. Wendy said goodbye bravely walked along and off the long, narrow path and disappeared. Everyone listened, waiting for a splash, but none came. Then they heard a familiar sound. It was Spen, warned by Tinkerbell. He had arrived just in time to scoop up Wendy in midair. Peter cried. He swooped down from the rigging. All set for a duel. And what a duel it was! While they fought, Tink Bell slashed the ropes that bound the boats. They fought the pirates, forcing them to jump off a boat and row away in their boat. Of a boat, and Hook jumped too. When the children last saw the wicked Captain Hook, he was swimming for the boat with the crocodile tick tocking hungrily behind him. Peter Pan took command of the pirate ship. Keep those halyards up with the jib. We're sailing to London, he cried. Her oh, Michael, John, cried Wendy. We're going home. And sure enough, with happy thoughts and faith and trust, and a liberal sprinkling of pixie dust, away flew that pirate ship through the skies till the gangplank was run out to the darling's nursery window sill. And now that they arrived, the lost boys did not want to stay. We sort of decided to stick with them, they said. So Wendy, John and Michael waved goodbye as Peter Pan's ship sailed of the sky, taking the last boys home to Netherlands, where they still live today. <music>